We are starting a new chapter of AM script in which we are going to address the topic of functions or conditional logic that AM script offers. Basically, in AM script, conditionals are very basic, but when used effectively, they are more than sufficient. On one hand, there is the if structure that we have already seen in the introduction. An abbreviation of this structure is if, followed by a logical functionality that allows you to perform loops. Now, we will delve into all of this in more detail. Now, let's delve into what the if conditional is it's the most fundamental concept in programming. The if statement allows you to evaluate one or multiple conditions and take action based on whether those conditions are true. The structure starts with an if, followed by a condition, and then a then to specify what happens when that condition is met. Further evaluations can follow in fact, you can have numerous evaluations. To accommodate this, you can use else if, which allows you to introduce another condition. Depending on the outcome of this condition, you use then again and perform an action. Finally, there's the versatile else it's a catch-all that comes into play when none of the previous conditions have been met. Keep in mind, it's not always mandatory, as there are situations where you simply want nothing to be done if none of the conditions are met. Therefore, else remains an optional aspect of the structure. The end if closes this conditional structure, marking the end of evaluations. In the example presented on this slide, we start with a variable declaration followed by value assignment, we employ assignment to assign values to first name, last name, and gender. From this point forward, we use a conditional to apply a specific treatment based on the gender. So, if the condition if gender equals male is satisfied, we assign Mr. To the treatment variable. Since there's a second potential condition, if gender equals female, we introduce an else if statement. In this scenario, if gender is female, we assign Mrs. to the treatment variable. Now, in case neither of these conditions are met, we introduce an else. Here, we assign a versatile value to the treatment variable in this case, Mr. or Mrs. Finally, we close this conditional block. This ensures that the variable definitely holds a value, as it would be one of those three options. And now, we can structure the email treatment accordingly. The presented example showcases this conditional structure, but countless other scenarios can utilize this conditional structure as well. Now, let's take a look at the IIF structure. In this case, it's like an abbreviation of an IF structure. However, the complexity here isn't as pronounced or as complex as that of the IF. While you can indeed nest these structures, for the sake of an introductory AM script course, we won't delve into nesting, which could complicate the understanding of structures. In this example, we're telling it that if first name isn't empty, it should assign the value of first name to the greeting variable, given that it's not empty. If it is empty, we use a generic value, which is member. As you can see, the structure follows a simple pattern, first, an evaluation, followed by assignment in the case of a true evaluation, and assignment in the case of a false evaluation of the condition. It's as straightforward as that. And finally, before delving into an example that will encompass all these concepts of AM script conditional logic, let's explore what a for loop is. A for loop generates a loop, meaning that in this case, the for construct starts with a variable holding a value, and you specify another value that determines where the loop should end. In our example, we've set it to perform five iterations. The variable starts with a value of 1. So, what happens is, starting from the value 1 specified in the for loop, and until the set iteration limit, which is 5 in this case, do what we want it to do. In this case, it's simply assigning a value to a variable and printing it on the screen or in an email. This construct can be used for various purposes, such as retrieving values from a data extension and printing them in a table or for an array of possibilities. For instance, imagine a scenario where a user abandoned their shopping cart. You retrieve all the products they put in the cart but didn't buy 
and then run a loop to print them as a list of items in the cart that were not purchased. In this specific example, we're running five iterations, and for each one, we're printing a text message using the concat function, which we'll cover later in the function section. We're printing this message with the value of the variable at i, which starts with 1, then 2, 3, 4, and 5 representing the iteration number. Additionally, we concatenate the word iteration with the variable, which changes as the loop progresses, advancing to the next element with the next at i. This iteration is ascending, moving from 1 to 5. While descending iterations are relatively uncommon, they can also be used. Nevertheless, let's see all of this in an example that encompasses both the if, conditionals and this loop, carried out through the for structure. As you can see here, the structure consists of for, the concept increment, which is specified using to, or down to, the actions we want to perform, and finally, next followed by the variable name, which brings the loop back to the beginning. Now, Let's see all that we've explained in this conditional module through an example. We're going to use these conditionals to create a table. Here, you can see the basic usage of the for loop. In this case, we'll execute a loop to generate 20 rows. The first row, when detected with this if statement, will paint what we would call the table header. If it's not the first row, it will paint the rest of the rows. Here, we're going to introduce a variation to exemplify the use of the conditional. And in this case, if the row is divisible by 2, using the mod function, it will be painted with one color, and if it's not, it will be painted with another color. This will result in a table with alternating colored rows, a common approach to differentiate rows. Here again, there's another loop both here and here, which is the one that paints the columns. In this case, for each row loop, we'll paint 5 columns. Therefore, it will be a table of 20 rows and 5 columns. Now, let's see the result. As I mentioned earlier, the first row is detected and printed in a specific way, and then each of the following rows is printed with its corresponding color. This demonstrates the power of using loops and conditionals, showcasing how most cases can be handled using AM script. In the case of AM script, this is achieved by retrieving data from a data extension, which we'll cover in more detail in another module and with a different example. By the way, we'd like to mention that we have a comprehensive AMP script manual for marketing available and it's completely free. We invite you to download it from the URL mentioned here. This manual serves as a valuable companion to all these videos.